Hi, so I'm Amy Henderson. I'm the CEO and co-founder of TendLab. We are a consultancy and a business that goes into the workplace to address all of the challenges and all of the opportunities that parenthood brings into the workplace. Today I'm going to talk to you about why parenthood at work matters. And I'm going to tell you my own personal story and then I'm going to get into some of the really compelling research that we've found that grounds our work and that will serve as a foundation for why this entire summit is not only relevant but critical at this moment in history. So first a little bit about me. I um, accidentally got pregnant with my third child when I was running an organization I'd co-founded with Van Jones and the Rockstar Prince called Yes We Code. And we were working um, nationally to increase racial diversity in the tech sector. And we had many large partners in the tech industry. We were working with Facebook and we were working with Google and a lot of other um, very large companies to address the lack of diversity in the tech sector. And it was incredible work that I loved. But when I accidentally got pregnant with my third and went out on maternity leave, I had three kids under the age of four, and I was panicked. I couldn't imagine how my husband and I were gonna manage our lives anymore. It felt like the wheels fell off the bus. And so in my state of panic, while out on mat leave, with my little infant in my arms, I paced the house and called up first the working moms and then also the working dads I most admire to say, how are you doing it? These conversations were deeply powerful and healing for me on many levels because first I found out that I wasn't alone. Almost every single parent I spoke with said that they were experiencing a lot of shame, overwhelm, pain, but no one was talking about it. They were afraid to acknowledge it, sometimes even to themselves, but certainly to others because they thought it would undermine their professional credibility. The second thing to happen in these conversations was the understanding that um, once we were able to acknowledge to ourselves and each other that we were really suffering, then we could see that despite that, and despite the significant bias that parents experience, which you can see on this slide here, um, you know, traditionally moms have experienced a lot of discrimination in the workplace, but this is becoming true for dads too. Um, increasingly, dads who are seen to have any caregiving responsibilities are also likely to face the same types of discrimination as moms. And despite this, despite the bias in our own heads, in the world around us, the vast majority of the parents I spoke with felt as though they were performing better in their careers because of their kids, not in spite of them. And so I went on a quest and I thought, okay, how can I take all that I've learned here through these interviews, which are fascinating, um, and um, it felt like a calling. I had to figure out what is going on here. Why is there such a discrepancy between what we're told to believe and what is possible. So I looked into a bunch of different research. I have a background in neuroscience, so I leaned heavily on that, but I looked into evolutionary biology, game theory, the future of work, primate studies, uh, you name it, I looked into it. And I found that um, after years of research, continuing the interviews um, and meeting with some of the top scientists in this field, I then took all that I'd learned and put together this concise uh, diagram here, which shows the five main skills that parenthood develops. Growth mindset, emotional intelligence, courage, capacity to collaborate, and enhanced purpose or focus. Um, and today I'm going to get into some of these in a, um, in, a, in a highlighted way, but our work and our research inside companies and directly with parents goes into much greater detail and helps companies and the parents and everyone they employ learn how to really unlock these skills for the benefit of everyone. Um, but I'm going to go into that in a minute. Once I had discovered that there were all these incredible capacities that parenthood develops that were validated through other fields of research, um, I then sat down and continuing my interviews, interviewed uh, Janet Van Hise, who had been a cohort of mine, a, a, a colleague of mine when I was running Yes We Code, and I said, look, these are all the things that I'm finding. And she, who was a mom of three, and who had started incredible programs at Twitter to support parents and the managers who worked with them, looked at all that I'd done, looked at her depth and scope of experience leading the people team at Twitter, and said, you know, Amy, these are the exact skills that we spend hundreds of thousands, if not more, um, a lot of money 
training our leaders and our executives to develop these skills. And, you're, and, and what you're telling me and what I've experienced is that this is exactly what, what parenthood does to people. Parenthood helps people develop these career critical skills that are needed in the modern workplace. And, and then she said, well, the companies that succeed are going to be the ones that foster and encourage the development of these skills. And it was like a million light bulbs went off in my head. And I said, yes, yes. And so I began to court Janet. And she eventually joined me. And we co-founded a company called Tend Lab. And our mission is to transform our cultural narrative about parenthood's impact on career performance. We do publications, have a book coming out at the end of the year, um, events like this summit and others, and we do workshops and in-depth consulting inside companies. These are a few of our clients. Um, we have many more that we've worked with. And um, for the purpose of today, I'm going to go into some of the neuroscience because we've found in working across companies and organizations that this is some of the most compelling work that cuts across any bias that might exist either in our own heads or in the greater culture in which we all operate. So here's the big thing we all know. Parenthood changes our brains. What I didn't know until I started this work is that this is true for dads and birth parents of all genders if they show up for the job. The main neuroscientist that has been researching this for the last 20 years, looking at her own work, looking at reviews of others' research, um, is a neuroscientist named Ruth Feldman, and she teaches at the Yale School of Medicine. And she has found that the greatest potential for plasticity in the adult human brain is in the years surrounding the birth of one's child. And this is true for both moms and dads. So when you think about it as an executive, as a people leader, as a parent, knowing that in the adult human experience, the greatest potential for plasticity is in the years surrounding the birth of one's child. It lets you know there's a lot at stake during that time. There is a lot at stake. And, and what happens? Here's a picture of your brain on parenting. <laughs> um, so what we've known for a while is that the amygdala is likely to get activated in a breastfeeding birth mother. When you carry a child, when you breastfeed a child, when you give birth to a child, when you have skin-to-skin -skin bonding with the child, your amygdala is likely to get activated. What we now know, thanks to Dr. Feldman's research, is that men and non-birth parents of all genders tend to first show up for parenting through later developing, later from an evolutionary standpoint, cortical structures. So the parts of our brain that are associated with conscious thought. And in particular, parenting impacts the STS region on the left and the right side. And the STS region is what they call the mentalizing network. So this is the part of your brain that you have to consciously think to use. So say a dad sees a baby crying, they have to think to themselves, okay, Ooh, is that baby, are they hungry? Are they thirsty? Are they tired? They have to really think about it. And it takes quite a while for them to, initially at first, learn why it is the baby's crying. They have to sort of test it out. Versus the amygdala, which is the part of our brain that we share with all other mammals. And when that's activated in a parent, they're instinctually able to respond. It's why when a mom hears her baby cry, her milk automatically lets down without her thinking about it. It's just an, an autonomic nervous response. This is the instinctual part of our brain, the amygdala. And what they found is that over time, dads who take a primary role in caretaking can activate their amygdala as much as primary care breastfeeding birth mothers. That the SDS regions begin to recruit the amygdala and it can be as fully activated. And all dads have they found that the amount of time they spend engaged in active caretaking, so we're not talking about like holding the baby just when they're happy and then passing them off. We're talking about having to figure it out, having to take on that primary role for at least some of the time. The more they're engaged in that active level of caretaking, the more likely they are to activate their amygdala and to develop the connections between these two parts of their brain. Um, and so let's talk a little bit more about what the amygdala does and why it's relevant to the modern workplace. The amygdala allows a person to anchor their feelings in the present moment, resonate with other people's pain and emotions, simulate other people's goals and actions in one's own brain, and here's a really key one for today, collaborate well with others. These are all skills that are critical for success today. And one of the people that I interviewed in my process is the co-founder of a company called Medallia, and I love this quote from her. She says, you can't fire your kids, so you must grow and evolve as a person to adapt to their needs and wants. As a result, parenthood has increased my capacity to nurture the best in others, a skill I strive to integrate into our company. I just love that. 
there's so much research to share, but for the purpose of this, I'm just giving you some of the highlights. I've talked about the positive benefits of showing up for parenting, but what is equally important to talk about, especially here in this forum among people leaders who and executives and parents who are setting the tones for their companies, is the, the potential for a negative impact during this year of greatest plasticity in the parental brain. So I'm going to look at, again, some of Dr. Feldman's research, and she's found that how you co-parent affects your brain. So it's not just the way that you show up for your child, but it's the way you show up with whoever your partner might be in raising your child. So for some, that is a nanny if you're a single parent. Um, for some, that is same-sex parents. For some, that is um, heterosexual couples. Whoever your partner is in raising your child, the way you engage with each other also affects the development of your brain. So you can see here that there are particular regions of the brain that get impacted when you are engaged in collaborative co-parenting behavior, and there are particular regions of the brain that get activated when you're engaged in undermining co-parenting behavior. And let's talk about what happens. Collaborative co-parenting increases neural networks associated with flexible goal-directed behavior, ability to cooperate effectively, considering multiple outcomes to guide behavior, enhanced empathy, and reciprocated altruism. So engaging in collaborative co-parenting increases your ability to have a growth mindset. On the other side, if you do not engage in collaborative co-parenting, if you have an undermining co-parenting relationship, and the research hasn't been done on this, but I would say that if you engage in undermining workplace relationships, if you're in a place that is toxic, that's hostile, where you don't feel meaningfully supported, I would say that this hasn't been validated through Dr. Feldman's research, but I think it stands to be seen that undermining co-parenting, engaging in a toxic work environment is likely to increase neural networks associated with fear and anxiety and increased competition and conflict with others, which is significant because this is the year in your entire life where your brain is going to change the most as an adult. So in terms of how this translates to the workplace, Dr. Feldman, who is the one behind all of this incredible research, she encourages the moms and dads working in her lab to take their full parental leave. Um, and I love this quote from her. She says that the relationship an engaged parent develops with their baby will enhance their ability to think outside of the box and to contribute to our work. Many of today's workplaces require a brain that can take the skill that it has and adapt it to new contexts new conditions, new windows of opportunity. The best employees don't necessarily have knowledge or specific information, but plasticity and malleability in acquiring new knowledge, adapting knowledge to new contexts, and integrating new perspectives. And isn't that exactly what we're all looking for in today's workplace? is employees who can develop this capacity or who can further develop this capacity. This is just a brief overview of some of our research, the foundation of what we stand on and, um, and why we are able to go into the workplace and advocate for the change that is needed today. Um, I really appreciate you being here. Here's one of our other um, advisors and advocates in his great quote. Um, Steve Wozniak says that 10 Labs work is critically important, especially now. Empowering working moms and dads to show up for parenthood will create a better future for us all.